questions. Just to answer very briefly to the question of uh, corruption. Uh, very few things were truly and deeply democratized after the fall of Junta, and that was corruption. And this is to go back to Alan's comment and uh, the way the particularities, or I his comment, the particularities of capitalism in Greece is this like proximity of state and uh, you know, what we describe as the public space. Mm -hmm. But corruption should not be discussed on this uh, moralistic level of uh, cultural size, something that is largely ingrained in the Greek psyche, in the Greek history, or in the Greek, okay? Because this is a way that uh, leads to this mm -hmm. essentialisms and this reification out of which you can't really, you know, find a way out. Is uh, but understanding it in a, in a, on a systemic way, that this is a system put in place on a very, very fundamentally wrong base, out of which is not the people, those 200 pensioners like that in Hios, or I forget which island was, that they were blind, and, exactly. you know, or were not blind, that they were exactly. receiving, exactly. you know. Exactly. 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 Okay. Right, uh, as an example, right? Uh, and I'm not saying that a state should not try to uh, deal with corruption on, of, on every level, but uh, we should pay much attention to, this, let's say, uh, illegal trading of importing of uh, oil, like heating oil or you know, shipping companies, not paying taxes. And these are like the segments or the parts of society that should be really, we should be paying attention. And this kind of you know, corruption and this kind of operations. Something that has not been touched at all, has not been challenged to whatever degree. Uh, but we can continue this discussion. No, but, 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 yes. but I think it's more than that. Because if, if we presuppose mm. that if the system only worked properly, if our presupposition right. if, therefore if, you have if, to be if, fair there. If the system was administered correctly right. and then these scoundrels like like the ship owners were able to bring yes. in oil yes. were yes. proper, then things would, be, would would not have been in crisis were better. Mm -hmm. Then we're wrong. No, so then right. you need wrong. to move so even further the to understand it's that true. the system yeah, itself is set and up this way yeah. that yeah. allows this tax evasion on that level, and but on the other side, instead of trying to get in there and let's say, you know, in the effort to fix things, points out to that what we call corruption on the you know, the smallest, like the lowest level, in a moralistic sense. To go back to the topic of our discussion here, uh, then in terms of the question of what series are done or on what level series are discusses uh, Golden Dawn, I don't have any side either. But my understanding is that there is a discussion or a negotiation or you know, <coughs> taking place on the level of how close we should be to the movement developing right now on the neighborhood level or the anti-fascist movement, and especially the anti-fascist movement that is associated largely with the anarchists, therefore as something that exists outside the law, therefore this is something dangerous for us as a parliamentary uh, as a part of the parliament, and, and this is where uh, what I was trying to explain comes in. And this is where I would suggest that uh, a series uh, that really wants to deal with the phenomenon of Golden Dawn and the rise of fascism has to stay and be closer to the fights, the struggles developing on a grassroots level. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, flexible thinking and electoral politics, I think one has to, which I will try to tie it with the question of religion and uh, the church, one has to pick the fight. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand the need for flexibility and I understand electoral politics. Mm -hmm. For instance, and to go back to the question of culture, yes, church is a very, very important uh, aspect of a Greek society. And the day you will decide to close down all the churches, stop paying the priests, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's the last recourse for people that they cannot find either emotionally, either ethically, or either find them in terms of survival these days, last recourse. I wouldn't be quite, you know, personally, I would pick up the first day 
Yes, that's what I'm saying precisely. But on the other side, like moving and suggesting that American capitalism is better, or at least po at this point, is better sure. than German capitalism, precisely because this is the direction that you know politics go right now. I would disagree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so yes, picking your fights. Talking about flexibility in electoral politics. First, uh, this, I was the first round, and I see that it's going to be another round. <coughs> this, this guy was next. Uh, yes, if you permit me, uh, my three minute yeah. comment. Um, yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, there is a debate uh, within uh, Syriza about God and Don. Uh, it is not a new phenomenon, uh, and it is also s systemic. Uh, <coughs> As you know, the Greek left went through a civil war uh, between 1949 uh, and 1946 uh, and 1949. Just before the war, uh, when uh, the Greek left defeated the, the, the Germans, it was a, a decision before Varkiza. Actually, that was the Varkiza uh, uh, agreement when it was uh, the, the turning point. Uh, the demand of the left, who controlled the military, was to democratize uh, the, the, the military forces. The army, the police, etc. That never happened. That was one of the major reasons uh, why uh, the left had to be outlawed until uh, 1974. From 76 to 1974 was outlawed. So uh, again, structurally and systematically through laws, the new democracy and PASOK governments all these years they never declare the creation of a of a new of a new Nazi party illegal as they did in Germany. Because it is part of their ruling. Uh, the, the Golden Dawn is part of the new democracy at this moment in order to play the game of the two extremes. The, 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 it is a fraction, the, the parliamentary fraction, but it is within uh, the parliament with former members uh, that now they have high positions and they, now they move to new democracy, Voridis and others, they are leaders of the Golden Dawn in the older days, and now they are lawyers and, and politicians, and also the military part, which is in the streets to scare people in order to, to, to uh, create this uh, confusion to the masses that, well, we have the little lady and the, and, the, and the old guys, and therefore we're the good people. But they are the instrument of, of the ruling class of, 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 uh, at this moment. Mm -hmm. So historically, they have created, and, and, and both New Democracy and, and PASOK, they use them uh, sometimes hidden, sometimes open. Uh, it is impossible to separate uh, the debate, with, uh, the symposium of the church and the left. It wasn't about the church. We have to make this distinction. It was about uh, 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 Syriza uh, thought uh, or, or uh, understood it uh, uh, on the spiritual level. Do not forget the, 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 the peculiar development because Greece has many peculiarities. One of them is uh, the connection of the, uh, of the Greek Orthodox faith that came through the paganistic development. Uh, the three more important uh, leaders uh, or spiritual leaders of the Orthodoxy they study with Aristotelian, Agios Vasilios, whatever, right? Uh, so they, 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 and they steal everything, right? They destroyed. The they destroyed. Society. I understand, but the, in the, the Greek, the Greek society was developed uh, through the Byzantium uh, uh, with with mixes of paganistic. Uh, uh, it is a wrong term, probably, to you. Yeah, but absolutely but, uh, of ancient Greek. They had, nothing, they had nothing to do, but it is a very peculiar mix. And don't forget, uh, the, 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 those of us who were uh, within the, uh, 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 against the junta years, you, you are younger this time. Uh, me too, but uh, <laughs> not that. <laughs> uh, all, over, all over the world, the most recognizable figure of the left who took in his uh, uh, um, aim, no, 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 I'm talking during the Kunda years, so the person who, who, who play a major role to rationalize uh, the, 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 the people uh, around the world was Mikis Tedorakis. 
his music and, and his concert. He plays a significant role. The most important play, it was by Yanis Ritsos, the most important uh, poet of the, of the left. And what was his, his famous uh, uh, Magnus Opus? About a religious figure, with epitaphios, right? Uh, a, a, a inspired by, by the demonstration of, of, the, of the workers in Saloniki when they killed a, a, young, a young boy. And then Ritsos wrote a magnificent poem based on religious symbols, and those symbols uh, it was, uh, became the symbol of the revolution. So we have to go deeper uh, to this connection. The church as an institution is one thing, but the, the, the faith and the role of the, how the left used the symbols uh, of this particular uh, historical development within the, the, the Greek society uh, in order to communicate with the masses. Don't forget that Greece, among uh, all the European, and particularly the Southern European countries, is the country who has this humongous connection between poetry and music. There is no other country you can find so many other uh, poems and, and popular and, uh, and, and literature issues uh, uh, being a, a, a cultural phenomenon that people can exchange, understand, and have it a certain standard. And at this moment, at this moment of um, uh, of, of uh, liquidity, that nothing remains the same. This is one of the focal points that the Greek society perhaps can understand. And if the left is brave enough to understand the spirituality uh, of poetry, music, and understanding, then it is a new way to communicate again with the masses. A brief, brief comment about religion and it the is left. to communicate. Right. Like religion, also, or the church, is not a monolithic <laughs> single thing. I mean, it has hierarchy, stratification. You can uh, tax the religious institutions, you can tax the church on the highest levels, you can try to combat like, and deal with corruption without necessarily having to, you know close the churches or like stop Nobody payment. Close them. Right. No, 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 but it, it is a serious You're right. discussion. You are talking about discrimination for other people. Yes. Right, right. Oh, this absolutely. is, absolutely. Absolutely. This yeah, is yeah. a great yeah. point. Yes, yeah. because you're absolutely right. Let's because start. in Greece, when we talk about Let's religion, start. the great. only thing we think about is like Greek orthodoxy. And uh, there are many other religions right now in Greece that should be freely practiced, such as that of Islam. And which many Come people on. ask. Even our enemies recognize us. We are like anti church and So you are right, absolutely. The, the church as an institution must, must be part. This is another thing. But how you communicate with the masses? This is the question. Freedom of, of, of the faith. Oh. The second round now. Thank you. Um, right. it's, it's going to be nice and short. Um, I'm glad that you're here because uh, at this point um, here in New York, it, we're pretty much uh, starving for some some kind of uh, inspiration to to have a, a strategy to reach out to the masses because one we're suffering a, a huge backlash of intellectualism and as well as um, cult, uh, a culture that 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 could pretty much influence the youth in, in, in to to become pre, you know like the uh, the new the new voice for for, for the people. Um, and you mentioned about uh, poetry and culture, all that good stuff. Uh, that's what needs to happen, you know, especially here in the, in the United States. Um, and it seems to me that, I mean, Greek, Greek is a place where culture, you know, grew from the years ago. It just, at the same time, also politics. Politics is, means a lot to everybody in, in other countries, but here politics is more like a like a, a, a cessation, a cessation of um, drug for most for most people in this country. You know. So I just wanted to say, what is the strategy that Syriza um, used, or what was what was the the objectives of reaching back to the masses uh, in a way that that caused them to, to win the election? And how can well, what what is your opinion on on the problems of here in the United States, but why the left is not as uh, vital or strong as it should be, or, you know, as much as say in Greece and other countries, or Venezuela. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, 
up over there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not there. I don't think you can see. Yeah. So, so thank you. Um, panel is fantastic. And I want to thank everybody. Um, I have a specific question that's related to Cerisa here in New York. But the, I wanted to say something. My overarching sort of, it's a general reminder. I think it's an important one. I think it follows the question of the brother here, which is that given the severity of the crisis in Greece and given the intensity of, of the challenge facing Syriza, it's, I think it's easy to forget the, 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 the responsibility that the, that the Greek working class has, that the Greek left has to the rest of the, to the, rest of the world um, left, to the rest of the world working class in terms of the centrality of, the, of that struggle and how everybody internationally is looking at Greece, is looking at Syriza, is looking at the Greek working class in, in its day-to-day in its -day struggle against austerity as this kind of laboratory of the most intense austerity. So I think it's important to remember that it, th there's, an, there's an obligation, not just in terms of the struggle in Greece, but, but to, to the international left, which is watching very closely. Um, and it's important how Syriza is organizing itself internally. But I think, and I want to put pressure on something that Peter said initially, I think it's, I think it's an in incorrect um, conclusion to draw that because there's a systemic crisis and because the kind of normative framework which people had operated from about the kind of Whig, Whig history that things would progress and we would be better than our parents. Because that's been shaken, somehow that struggle, no, str struggle as we've traditionally known it no longer matters. And I don't, I, don't think that's, I don't think that's true at all. And I can only imagine where Greece would be if we hadn't had the 21 general strikes. And I can only imagine where Spain would be if we didn't have the indignados. And so, I think we I think we the, the we need to we need to think very carefully about that um, and not throw away the baby with the bathwater. The specific question I had in relationship to those general points is the question of how we respond to what caused this meeting to be moved here tonight. How do we respond to the threats and the, and the violence in a story? And I know I had this debate beforehand with Peter about whether we 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 ignore the, the threats from Golden Dawn at the, because we don't want to raise their profile, or whether we have an obligation to, to call them out and to challenge, to challenge the idea that Syriza is not really Greek, or that Sir, the Syriza in New York are somehow terrorists. And I fall on the side that we, need, we, we have a responsibility to challenge. It's a responsibility not just to the Greek community to, to defend Syriza and to defend the project of Syriza in New York, but I think it's a responsibility to the broader left and to, and to the working class of New York. And so I think we need to take a stand yeah. publicly around this. I'd just like to uh, make an attempt to revisit uh, Alan's point about um, one thing he's advocating or, or, or talking about is the clean, bright place with the banks and what that would uh, actually mm -hmm. mean. Uh, you know, if you could clarify that. Everybody was turning a blind eye, thinking if we don't do anything about them, they're going to go away. And I think that, you know, as we see, they didn't go away. They just got stronger because the conditions were there for them to get stronger. And I think we have to get a lesson, learn a lesson from that. We cannot just ignore them. They're not going to go away. Especially now in Astoria, in New York, I think they're going to feel more involved, and they will be trying try to cause more trouble. But I want to go back to the point. Um, to the beginning of the, of the topic about moralism, but I think I agree with Peter that we cannot, especially on the left, there is a tendency in the general left of uh, uh, dealing with people as greedy bosses. Like if we had less greedy bosses, everything would be okay. If the bankers were less greedy, nicer, we wouldn't be in trouble. And if the pharmaceuticals were not as greedy, we wouldn't be dealing with all these, you know, um, drugs that are killing people. And we tend, there is a tendency to see these things, like the bad David Polk, but the good George Soros. And by the way, single-handedly caused a crisis, a financial crisis in, in Asia a few years back that, of course, caused a lot of people to lose their jobs, their homes, whatever. There was a price to pay for that. So there is a lot of that this moralistic, and I agree with Peter, we have to move away from that. 
And it's not green, the other is green, but what is greedy about the system is the fact that it's based on the principle that it needs to not just make profit, but keep growing the profit. Because the moment it stops growing, everything comes to a halt, and then that, they need to take, you know, the, the system needs so to keep taking and growing, and they need to, take, to, to attack mm -hmm. reporters, they need to do what, um, uh, they would, uh, it's called accumulation but dispossession by David Harvey. Like, if you can't grow it, if you can't make the economy grow and make profits, you just take it for somebody else. And that somebody else will be either the workers, the poor peasants in, 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 in the third world that have to move into other countries, that become the immigrants that everybody hates. So there is, you know, greed is not a, um, it's not a, uh, a value. It's is, is something that the system is based on. And I think that at times we're able, the left is able to make good gains because against that tendency because you know they build strong movements. But I think where the left always has a problem is when they think they can manage the system better than everybody else, on the more humane ways, on more friendly ways or friendly basis for the workers and the people around the world. And they've always failed because it's a system, as I said, that can only survive on the basis of stealing or taking away from other people on the basis of, of, of uh, exploitation. So we need to fight against the system and move away from the greed versus the good in, um, in our society. We need to build up a uh, resistance to these kinds of fascist attacks because these are really like the leading edge of what the uh, state wants to do here. Once we get serious about resisting attacks, just like the attacks uh, uh, against austerity in uh, Greece are responded to by Golden Dawn and the police and the army. That's never going to change. When there's capitalism, there's also always going to be racism, anti-immigrant racism and homophobia and all the rest. That is what capitalism does. Um, I, it seems to me that all of the different trade union groups uh, groupings inside of Greece need to form a united front. Syriza and Tarsa, uh, the KKE, uh, it seems to me that a united front to just a massive protest in the immigrant neighborhoods would begin to scare the hell out of the fascists and claim the streets for the working class. It's going to be, I'm afraid, just like it was in Germany and just like it was in Spain, a question of control of the streets. And it's not going to be a judge, a politician, or a lawyer that's going to get it for you. It's going to be the working class in motion. And I think that uh, workers really need to take over in Greece. There needs to be a revolution. There's no way around that. that I don't think that word has been used yet, but it needs to be used because there is no alternative in Greece, as the speakers have already expressed. And I would like to say, not to sound dogmatic, but please go back and read Trotsky on Spain, read Trotsky on Germany. Those are wonderful, brilliant political essays that uh, by a great, great writer. And all of that material is relevant today. Yeah. The martial law that has been uh, uh, put down on the ferry workers and the metro workers earlier, um, there's been some discussion in whispers of this type of, of governmental officials in the Greek uh, government with those of law enforcement and the military of uh, extending that martial law to more, uh, more aggressive action against the working class. Could we see a return, perhaps, of, a more, uh, of, 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 of one world capitalism or some Greek capitalism going on the offensive and really trying to shut down the, the, the movement of the working class, the general strikes and so forth? Could we, could we see a return of 67, 74 because of what they fear of a great social revolution taking place uh, in Greece that can ignite the world in many respects? My second point is uh, the question of Cyprus visit. I think he, from an outsider looking in, did he make a serious mistake to speak into liberal elements, uh, uh, the economists, and, and in many ways attempting to appease uh, U.S. capitalism. We know historically Castro made some mistakes when he went to the United States to visit and sat down with Nixon 
Lumumba made no state from the Congo and sat down with heads of state of the United States okay. in many respects. And I think that's part of the discussion is the reason of where should we go? What model are we looking at? Do we function as a, a client for uh, Greek capitalism and world capitalism? And I think that's the question that's being posed. My final question is really for Alan, actually. Initiative 1000, this attempt of the left to cut across the sectarianism, to really have a broad program and approach, and if the Syriza leadership <coughs> may be moving in a different direction, and maybe in the right words direction, then what we need to do, or what we have to do in order, one, of advancing the working class, nationalization of industry, uh, and, and, and have a society based on the human needs of the Greek people. And I think that's a, a serious question. That's the question that's being posed. This uh, attack last night uh, by whoever they were um, that forced us to move the venue to here um, not go unanswered. It's uh, very important that we take a public stand um, about this because it is already a public matter. The fact that we are here is already a public matter. It is already known. So I don't think it's enough to say we went ahead and had this meeting and it was a great meeting and they didn't stop it. Uh, because we're not in Astoria right now, we're at the Brecht Forum. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's very important uh, that uh, they not learn um, the lesson that they can uh, you know, push this uh, from one borough to the next. Uh, you know, and um, so I'm really hoping that out of this meeting will come some kind of statement uh, afterwards uh, you know, condemning this in, uh, in, in no uncertain terms and taking a very public stance. And it's important for all you know, I, I really think it is, it is important not just for Syriza um, or uh, the Greek left community, but uh, for the entire left in New York City, that that be the case. Yeah. One more? Okay, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Uh, Alan, before you said that uh, the rampant uh, corruption and capitalism in Greeks. Okay, but let's face it, when Pasok in the 80s, Became, came to power, he, they actually, he, Papandreou, the leader of Pasok, a very charismatic person, uh, he private, uh, no, I'm sorry, he didn't privatize, he actually nationalized quite a few companies. Let's take, for example, I'm gonna take two examples. Skaramaga, the um, shipping uh, building industry, and Olympiaki, the Olympic Airways. What happened? You're gonna tell me, yeah, this, Parties, Nea Demokratia and Pasok, they started using it as, as a recruiting strategy and were starting uh, putting people, their people, in there. But the unions in those, they never came out to say, listen, you're creating a problem right here. Why? Because they will hurt their pocket. So it's not so much a problem of the capitalist, I'm not saying that the capitalism is something good or anything, or, but you see, greed doesn't matter what class you belong to. When your pocket hurts, and they will have hurt your pocket, they never came out to say what's happening is wrong. We're having way too many people in these companies. We're not producing, we are creating a mess. They didn't come out to strike for that. They came out to strike only when their pocket was hurting. So that's my good point, Nikos. I think how Greece, which is the victim it would seem to me of a kind of resurrection of a kind of racism within Europe that the parallel, and, and in many ways the beginning of it is in the United States, nativism, the nativist movement in the 1920s, which before you had the, before the idea of white people came around, you had the notion of a kind of northern Aryan race and the idea of inferior people. And you can see a lot of that discourse as if it had been asleep all this time, has been resurrected, and is being used in Europe uh, to, as a kind of way to uh, separate and isolate what's happening in Greece from the rest of Europe and saying in some way, and this goes back to what Despinas is, the use of this kind of language and thought which has a history. So, you know, again, it is, is one of the things is to look at the history of this. And the other thing, you know, is talking about the creation of the state is that Germany, you know, the German state was created around an economy. In other words, the neoliberalism of, of Germany uh, and, and the way it was created and the way that 
uh, it, de it, was de it was a political state that was started around an economy. But that was their model of neoliberalism. So it's very interesting to look at that origin for German neoliberalism and see what's going on or over time, what the logic is behind austerity in, in Greece today and the, and the way that that wants to depoliticize things, banks taking over things, and the way the fascists too, you know, this way of taking it away from politics so that there is a crisis around politics and the idea of poetry and music I think are very key here actually in terms of expanding where, where democracy has been reduced to this kind of toothless uh, 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 creature owned by the, the dominant parties and needs to be you know, revitalized and rethought. And it's not, it would seem by chance that this should be happening in Greece, which obviously is a very particular relation to democracy. The, in, the American left, it was perceived that the American left lost an opportunity uh, to institute itself or to find institutions or to build institutions and I know that's a frightening word to a lot of young people and a lot of the Occupy people um, for of course for terrible autocracy in the institutionalizing of a movement or of an effort but if, if we cannot turn to electoral politics or use electoral politics as our institution for creating change, are you seeing the development in Greece, or are you seeing it anywhere, of specific institutions or alternative institutions or existentially new institutions that will Corruption is very, um, very connected to how big and how powerful the country is where the corruption takes place. In 2007, a year before the economies of the world collapsed, Goldman Sachs made 11 trips to Greece to sell junk bonds. They pushed that onto the, onto the top of the real government, and, and they wanted to be modern and be like the rest of the world and, and get on the board of this speculation and this junk. And they bought it, and they incorporated it into this, this high level of debt. The, the currency of the EU, the, the fact that there was great debt that was being hidden within the EU, was all part of endemic corruption that not just one country was involved in, but many countries. But the fact is, a wealthy country like the United States, our corruption, we supersede it by printing money. A country like Greece can't do it. I mean, I, I worked in St. Vincent's Hospital, not far from here. That hospital doesn't exist anymore, purely through corruption. It, they took a public concern meant for the community, yes. and they sold it off for private interest. And it happens constantly in capitalism, except we have a phrase here, too big to jail, too big to fail. And they're just too big to jail in this country, because if you take some of those people down, you're taking down world leaders. That is clearly not the case for Greek capitalism. But it's very interesting. The Greek working class had to pay from the point of view of the ruling class. When I first became an activist in the 80s, the air traffic controller strike was a very big issue. But at the very same time in Greece in the 80s, the air traffic controllers also went on strike. They took on the government. They said, you know, we're very tired because our working conditions are bad, and I, we're falling asleep. <laughs> we can't do the job. They forced the government to understand that as workers, they were not going to take the agenda of big business. They went from a very poor country to a country with a, where people could retire at the age of 55, and they had to be punished for that. Capitalism in the midst of austerity couldn't allow Greece to have living standards like that. To, to kind of enter into the modern world, they had to pay. So all the language of laziness and whatever, as American workers, we should be aware, you know, uh, lazy American worker, and then it was the great Japanese worker. Now the Japanese workers are lazy, right? Because they don't want to give up a, a decent living standard. The German workers will be lazy too at some point when capitalism, you know, needs to dismantle that economy. Right now they're the engines of the European economy. It won't always be the case. 
the lazy Chinese worker, you know, as opposed to the workers in Bangladesh that can do things even cheaper. That's the, the, the language of capitalism, and, and we reject that. We reject the way they pit workers against each other. And, and that's, that's the hope that I think Sirius opposes. The question is, as an American, somebody who has visited Greece in the past, but as, as a, uh, an internationalist, I was disappointed with Tsipras' uh, performance in New York City because he spoke like a bank manager, not like somebody that could possibly unleash a movement of, of justice, you know, which, which is really what taking the economy and, and transforming it into one that serves the needs of everyone would be. He's talking about we'll pay our taxes, we're the real Europeans, they're not, all this kind of language that was meant to lull the audience but actually makes us more frightened because people like Golden Dawn are the ones that capitalize from that double speak, that you know, realistic talk. And, and that's the problem. The, the, the issue is, is that Golden Dawn speaks boldly they, they have stupid answers, but they answer you. <laughs> and, and if the ruling class in Greece, um, their parties could collapse at any time. The Lagarde list, there are many indicators that, that the government could come down. Is Syriza, in the form that it is right now, prepared to step into that void? That's frightening. Because if they don't understand that they're going to have to quickly appeal to the working class around the world, because if they stop paying that debt, if they even think they want to radically restructure it, the, the walls will go up so fast. Capital flight is already a fact of life in Greece. It will be accelerated to such a point that it will become a no-go area. It will become like Albania. And, and that's the problem. They have to quickly make the appeal to the workers of the world, not the politicians of the world at this point, that you're all suffering from austerity, Irish people, Portuguese people, American people. We can't live like this any longer. We need a program instead that lifts our living standard and, and expectations rather than making us think, well, maybe the, the life of the 1900s wasn't so bad in Greece. I have that's that's my, my point. Um, I wasn't there when whatever happened, but at the same time, I don't think it's really a battle that's... The discussion is the most important part here, not where it takes place. I mean, would it have been better if it was up there? Yeah, fine. But at the same time, the battle here is, what's the cons is what the issues to be discussed are not, do we stand and fight, in this case anyway. Um, what's it called? The other thing, uh, two other things. Um, I went to a discussion, um, I think it was... I think Money at a Politics Group from Occupy, and they had this guy, um, Neil Borowski, who worked on the bailout uh, back in 2007, 2008, whenever he, I think it was 2008. Um, he worked on the bailout, and he, and he said that um, he was really pissed off about it. He wrote a whole book called Bailout. Um, and with his take on it was, I'm not speaking for it, against capitalism here or whatever, but he said that what happened in America, it's not capitalism, it's corporate welfare. Capitalism, big guys fail, and that's all there is to it. Um, pers and yeah, that's that. That was just that part. Um, the other thing is, I think there's way too much um, focus and importance placed on leaders of government. Um, are they put there to pass legislation, write laws? Yeah. Should they be leaders? No. They just represent us and what we want there. They have access to delegate more resources to different places, but are they leaders? No. And they should not never be given that power, because once you give them that power, that's... I'm, you have, in America, you have like 535 congressmen, you have 300 million people, I'd say the leaders and the people, not, and 300 million people, not 535 people apparently in, on, on Capitol Hill voting, voting for austerity. Yeah. I Excuse me. Huh? I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, but, but let's, let's uh, respond, yes? Because we have many. many, many it, it's already 8 o'clock. No, we have this time. 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 We have this time.
stuff. This sounds more like a Greek meeting now. You have to be there. We have a number of French and American. And I need to smoke. The louder the better. We have a number of six cannons. The more I number of questions. 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 You know, I mean, I did not say that struggle no longer matters. The argument on the systemic nature of the crisis and how traumatic it is to face up with it was that it's, it's the crisis is so deep and so, so internal, so systemic in a sense, that it is forcing us to question many of the, our own pre preconceptions and myths. From the standpoint of the left, not that struggle is no longer uh, uh, important, but that the forms of struggle, the tactics that we had relied upon in the past, and which were part of the way, not only we organized, but which we understood how history unfolds or how things take place, no longer seems to be the case. I could be wrong, but I'm saying the kind of, the, the, the idea that, that through resistance, whether it's factory occupations, whether it's general strikes, whether that some kind of process internal to the system can reform it. And again, I'm saying everyone from, whether we go from Carl Pogliani to Francis Fox Piven to Nicholas Pogliani, whatever the case may be, that idea seems to be more and more tenuous, if true at all. And if it's true anywhere, maybe it's true places like Bulgaria, where some of the machinery of the state has not been modernized and centralized to the, the way that it has been in Greece and the United States and elsewhere. So I'm, I'm not saying we give up political, political struggle. I'm saying we have to be thoughtful and, 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 and think about it and try to make sense of why things are not going the way we would think it should go. Because if you have a left party with 27% of the vote and you have 21 general strikes, in another era, you would be talking about not the New Deal under FDR. Think, yeah, of course, m much more than that. But we don't see that, not, nothing close to that. If anything, we are losing every significant battle. On the question of Golden Dawn in the movie, Golden Dawn in Greece is a very serious issue and is very dangerous. Golden Dawn in New York is of no consequence. It is four or five people. They managed, because of the venue we were going to use, to get those people scared enough that said, we're not comfortable with you using the space. We don't want to cause trouble for other people. In the future, we will have events in Astoria. Finding a space is not going to be a problem. And I think we do not want to advertise or make believe that, that Golden Dawn in New York is some kind of a serious threat when it is not. Good. And make them into being more important than they are because they're, they're, they're of no consequence. Golden Dawn in Greece is a serious issue, but not in New York not the New York, and we should not be advertising them. We are not afraid of them, obviously. There's no question about it. You know, people, people may think that we are petite bourgeois intellectuals, but, you know, I mean, I grew, up in, I, grew up in, I grew up in East Baltimore. I'm not afraid of some idiots who, who make a phone call. You understand? Yeah, well, we, well, what, yeah, we, we don't, you know, that's not, that, that's an issue. So I, my, my position is, my position is, you know, we, we, they are not someone to be, a group to be taken very seriously. They are very, you know, you know, dishonorable calling of people 12, 30 in the morning, scaring them, saying we're going to blow up your building. But, you know, that, that, that's, that, that is not a, a serious political issue at this point. In Greece, they are a serious problem. Can I take this thread and continue? Yeah. Uh, because I disagree with that. Uh, yes, Golden Dawn in New York is small, but let's say when we started talking about them, uh, we not even anticipated that they would ever come like in a public meeting or that they would try to challenge us like this. Or So I'm not sure if there's going to be further escalation. That's point one. Point two is that Golden Dawn New York or Golden Dawn Melbourne or Golden Dawn Munich, as I hear my friend is like living there, and uh, there are issues. They are challenging the faculty of high school there, or Golden Dawn New York are not entirely uh, disconnected. And we know that people living here travel in Greece, so they might not be under the system or like the, you know, or uh, the situation of New York being able to directly, let's say, threaten physically or other way like us here, but 
we are all connected to other people living in other parts of the world, like most likely like Greece, and they might be able like to be a threat there. So I think it is something we have to look more closely instead of, you know, uh, understanding Golden Dawn as something existing only in the community of New York. That's one. Then I would like uh, very briefly like connect a couple of questions. One, which I think is very, very important one, what direction do we go as the left, let's say, not just the Greek left, but the left in the US, in the left worldwide, and what model do we follow? And I don't think we actually have available models to pick up from, but we experience right now new things also happening. We can evaluate, as Akis also said, and as you suggested, uh, looking towards history, we can evaluate previous <laughs> struggles, uh, results, successes, and failures. Uh, we have an what is the Occupy movement happening, okay, with all its failures and all its difficulties. Mm -hmm. We have occupations of uh, buildings or factories like uh, taken up by uh, the workers themselves right now in Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how much we can support these efforts, and I want to link that to the question then of nationalization and corruption, and see how these new efforts can be built or into a model instead of trying to find available models and try to follow them. Uh, yes, the argument about PASOK and nationalization corruption is a very <coughs> good one to counter argue or to say, to question how a left government, let's say, would have a successful nationalization of the banks or the uh, uh, production. And uh, I'm not sure I have an answer because left is not constituted by sense. We're all prone to corruption, okay? And there is a challenge, how we're mm -hmm. gonna lead that. Um, in terms of the question of leadership, which I think that takes us to that direction as well. Yes, we, it might be preferable a weak leadership and a more direct participation of the people. Um, and I think I can stop here. Are we making closing remarks? Or are we we want to have another round of comments. Well, yeah, there want to know, uh, just a uh, clarification on your proposal about yeah. the ranking banks. with the banks, yeah. which I think is very important for us to understand if Syriza is really a different you know, political uh, entity as we go forward, or will it be just another good manager of the, of the <laughs> capitalist crisis and Alex Spiras becomes the CEO of uh, you know, the Eurozone uh, one day? I mean, I think it's well, a very okay. important question yes, going yes. forward. You these, know, issues, uh, um, yeah. these issues will be uh, determined mm -hmm. um, in the next uh, period. Actually, the points that Nikos made before about uh, PASOK, the experience with PASOK, mm -hmm. are very uh, pertinent in this because PASOK started out, actually, as a, as, a, as a movement that was advocating nationalizations and a movement that was advocating a socialist alternative, actually, <coughs> at, in the 70s. Uh, but it ended up becoming a system, that, uh, becoming, as Nikos quite correctly pointed out, becoming a manager of and a, a reaching an accommodation with the European ruling class uh, and, uh, and becoming actually a capitalist manager and as a result paying the price now of being actually an open uh, advocate of neoliberalism and the austerity they're implementing on the working class. And as a result of that, this party is, is in the verge, on the verge of splits and extinction over the next period. And ultimately, I would say that that will be the, uh, the determinant factor, what's going to happen to Syriza. Actually, Syriza, because it's far less unified than PASOK. PASOK, in reality, was much, far more unified as a, as a party, much more centralized uh, uh, institutionally than uh, Syriza. Syriza is more of a coalition. Syriza could very easily, if it fails, go, could go back to 3%, <laughs> you know, if it's perceived as unable to resolve. It exploded. The reason why it exploded because Cip is not because Cyprus is very handsome and very, uh, you know, clever or, you know, anything. It's because it re although he is. Although he is, uh, <laughs> my wife keeps reminding me all the time and says, well, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and anybody who has seen him, I mean, he's very handsome. There's no question about it. But the problem is that history is not made by handsome people. The problem is that programs and, and ultimately the movement of the masses 
themselves actually uh, resolve these uh, decisive questions. And of course, the fate of Syriza will be determined by that. It will be determined by whether it will, if, if, if uh, even a, if probably if you could split in the direction of uh, a section of it beca- looking to become manage- management, you know, under better, you know, honest. But what would be the consequence of breaking either with the euro fully or yes. with the banks that you advocate? Yes, yes, that's, that's the, the question. question. The no, I was question. trying to, I was only the prefacing. Hedge fund managers have yeah. made billions of dollars on Greek bonds. Yes, yes. So name the hedge fund managers. No, that's right. And that's they right. should be, you know, now what they're doing is taking that capital and moving it to, you know, Thailand. My, you my know, opinion, my opinion China, is this. So my opinion so is, so my opinion is this. It's in terms of what is, and I think that there is a huge, as I said, discussion inside cities about this issue. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not a finished discussion. Mm-hmm. There are tendencies and trends. There is a clear, in my opinion, there's a defined trend that is beginning to articulate the idea of managing this better. There is a trend that's beginning to articulate the idea that we should renegotiate and we should manage this in a better way and make more strategic decisions and so on. They put it forward in, a, in, a, in that way. My opinion that that's going to open the door to becoming to becoming man- management. My opinion is that what do I mean by a clean, and that is a view that's advocated, but not by just a handful of people, by many, many people inside uh, Syriza at the present time. The idea that we need to nationalize the banking se- sector, that the bank- banking sector needs to be immediately a government, a Syriza government needs to ba- nationalize it, not uh, re- declare that they will not pay the debt, which everybody knows is unpayable, it, you know, it's just, it's just a, a charade that they keep playing. That we're gonna get. In reality, what they're doing with the, the money that they give is like a bailout to the French and German banks that have exposure to, to Greece. That's what they're doing. That money goes to, to the Greek government and then it goes back out to the, to the, uh, to the European banks. So what you need is, this, is this, uh, gov- these, uh, these banks to be nationalized because that is the only way in which actually it's even remotely realistic. It's realistic that you could actually have, plus the nationalization of, um, of, uh, of uh, key sectors of production in order to, and, and then combining investment, in other, in other words, having an investment tool, because you do have, uh, the, by having the banks, you would be able to. Of course, instantly, the European Union will kick you out. There's no question about it, that they're gonna kick you out. And you're gonna need, you're gonna open the door to the need. Oh, how are you gonna create employment? How can you increase? Is there, is there a program for import substitution, for example? Are there programs, you know, being, Talked about if this if this scenario begins to play. I think there are. I think more radical scenario. The, the, Syriza, Syriza refuses. Yeah. They or the leadership of Syriza refuses to discuss this openly. However, inside the party, there is a ferocious discussion about what's Plan B. For example, that's the, fav- the notorious discussion about Plan B. In other words, these guys know. I mean, perhaps they're waiting for the German elections just to kick the Greek, uh, yeah, but to, you know, to kick them out. Also, supposedly, there yeah. is planning. But it's not something that is shared with the public, and there is yes. where the disagreement of some of us exists that uh, a discussion about uh, the exit from the euro would not undermine the narrative of Syriza or the program of Syriza, but mm-hmm. on the other side, it would strengthen mm-hmm. it in terms of both electoral appeal, mm-hmm. but also in terms of the strength it would have in its negotiation on the European uh, economic tables. Of course, this is an argument that not everybody shares, and as Alan says, like, yes, there is, there is a, going to be major events. At the moment, discussion. you see, there was a discrepancy. The mood in the country, for example, there was, a, there was a discrepancy in the mood in the country itself. 70% of people, 60% of the people didn't want to leave the, the, the euro zone. Every poll was showing, actually. It was, it was a kind of, on the other hand, the reality of the situation was, so there is, a, a, what, the way these contradictions will be resolved, in my opinion, is going to be on the basis of events. In other words, a new major economic downturn, uh, a, a, a crash, or, or, or you know, like you could have other countries that could detonate a European, right? New European, including Italy, by the way. Now it's on the front ranks of, uh, of, of. Uh, actually, I saw it spreads. Whatever that, you know, all of that is, it spreads are going to go through the roof again because of the government instability that's going to continue, and that's what you're going to have. So there's going to be, but events are going to drive this, and they're going to drive people into the need to. I mean, the basic needs in Greece is they need to create employment, and to re- restore living standards. How are you going to create employment? On the basis of what? Uh, actually, the argument of, uh, de- re- they, they used to say, if you reduce wages, 
and mm -hmm. so on. That, that's called, but of course, reduce, you know, uh, Bulgaria reduces wages. They don't get actually <laughs> more employment. You know, and everything else, it's not. Or on the, you know, and, and so on. So, on the, so the only way, in my opinion, uh, you know, that that could be initiated would be a national. Now, and that has to address the points that Nikos makes. That this cannot be just make-believe government, government programs. This should be done on the basis of planning, one, an element of planning. To, because there are real needs in the economy to rebuild the infrastructure, to, you know, whatever what needs are needed to be in order to ignite that process, one. Two, which will create jobs and everything else. Two is going to have to be on the basis of workers' control and management. In other words, there has to be full, transparent accountability so that you don't have the padding of jobs or anything like that, but it's going to be all openly in, 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 and so on. But it's going to be, and even if there are sacrifices need to be made, they need to be made openly and honestly in terms of explaining. Three, it's internationalism in the sense that the Greek, Greek in my opinion, uh, government breaking with uh, European capitalism needs to link that struggle to, to say to the German, to, to say to the Spanish workers, to the Italian workers, to the Bulgarian workers, and so on, to say that we need to build an alternative Europe, which is going to be based on the needs of working people rather than the needs of the bankers, uh, and so on. That is, the, that is going to be the initiating of a new project of building a socialist alternative, if you like, to, uh, to, to, to the current nightmare. For all European working but, people, but this is a that they would have to. Akira, this is a problem too. If the idea, if the argument is, if the argument, this is why I think yes, I'm assisting yes. on this traumatic dimension. Yes. If the argument is that if only we, we we take out the corrupting influence, using it in a very broad sense, of the need to grow, then we can get mm -hmm. standard living in the sense that we understand them related to levels of consumption rates of employment. We can go back in a sense to, 19, to 2005 or 2004, 2006. This is also, I think, a, a kind of fantasy. Now, the question of the, of the nationalism of the banks is not a left-wing strategy. Nationalism of the banks is not some kind of left-wing thing. It is, it is something that, of course, the British did very recently. Yes, it is, a, 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 you know, it is the government steps in to save the banks and the, the money to depositors as much as possible in a certain kind of crisis. If Greece defaults on the debt, there is no, there was no longer in existence the next day a private bank in Greece because they are so exposed, of course, to the debt that they will be, well, you know, there will be not even one, one penny in any of the banks. So that, that, the question then is if you, it will be nationalized by anyone in power, whether it's CDSA, whether it's the, the IMF, whether it's Mickey Mouse, doesn't matter. You see, anyone who is then in power in Greece will have to nationalize the banks in the sense of they have to then step in and, 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 and provide. Now, how it's done and towards what end is an open question. I mean, it's obviously a whole thing, it's a, it's a political question. But the idea that, again, you know, just to, to go against um, or to disagree a little bit with what Vakilea said, that the point is that we need to put the needs of the people first mm -hmm. as opposed to the needs of, uh, of mm -hmm. the banks, that somehow this financialization of capitalism leads us into all kinds of... of, of uh, this, I think, is, is insufficient because I don't think it's possible to begin with, and I don't even I don't necessarily think it's desirable. I don't even know that if, if the question of, of having a new kind of society, something new, is so we can maintain certain levels of consumption or certain levels of of standard of living in that sense. You know, I mean, I'm sure, I, I feel it's not only meaning in that way, but that if that, if that is sort of the point of departure, I'm skeptical on that level as well. 